this is the best gaming headset that I own that I don't actually intend on using again. The Epos H6 Pro seems to have been designed for one specific group of people, top FPS players, and I'm not one of those. Still, Epos did a great job tuning this headset for what it's made for. The headphone audio is very treble and upper mid-range focused. The bass exists, but only about as much as The Rock has hair. The people who say there's too much bass in this thing seem to be fans of SteelSeries headsets, which have the harshest treble of any brand of headsets that I've used. Consequently, footsteps stand out incredibly well in these. This is because footsteps are a percussive or a short impacting sound. In Call of Duty, for example, even though footsteps' fundamental frequency is usually in the 200 to 500 hertz range, when you decrease the volume of that frequency, you still hear the harmonics of the footsteps, which is the same sound at a different pitch, at much higher frequencies, but without getting muddied up with the explosions and other rumbles like vehicles driving, and I'll have a full video talking about that. The soundstage is also the widest of any closed back headset that I've used, so if you want that really expanded sense of space, then the H6 Pro is the way to go. There's an open back variant of this as well if you want an even more spacious device, but I only have the closed back version, so I can't actually vouch for the other one. Now, if you're looking for immersion, heavy hitting bass, or a device that's versatile for a lot of different use cases, I found there to be much better options like Epos's own PC38X, the Logitech G Pro X2, and the Odyssey Maxwell. And I've compared all three of those devices to this one in a different video. Now, the microphone on the H6 Pro, which I'm speaking into right now, is above average for a gaming headset. But again, we're talking about gaming headsets, so the competition isn't super strong. Now, the background noise rejection is quite good on this device, especially considering that it is an all analog headset. There's not like any post processing that it's doing. Keyboard typing isn't really getting through too much as I'm doing a little bit of that. So it's not an absolutely amazing microphone, but it is quite good compared to most other gaming headsets. The comfort and build is really good as well. It's an analog headset with two different proprietary cables, one with a splitter and one without. This is a mostly plastic build, but with a little bit of metal on the headband. There's a volume wheel on the right ear cup that actually goes to zero, unlike the PC38X, which just lowers it a little bit. There's also a detachable mic, so if you don't want the mic on at all times, you can just pull it off and it is magnetic. It comes with two different covers. Well, they're the same covers, but just two if you lose one. So you can just put that right on if you don't need the mic on at all times. There are really comfortable ear pads here. There's a very soft cloth inside and there's pleather on the outside and that's probably why the background noise rejection is so good passively on this is because of that pleather. Overall, if you are a competitive FPS player, this headset is excellent. The detail and soundstage is outstanding even on the closed bag variant. But for other use cases, I recommend something more balanced like the Drop Plus PC38X, the Logitech G Pro X2, or the Odyssey Maxwell.